Can this do the nucleophilic aromatic substitution? Uh, yeah. Because What's, you don't have an electron withdrawing group. That's right. Alkyl groups are slightly electron donating. So this is not going to be a good electrophile for a nucleophilic substitution. Well, technically, we have an electron withdrawing group, but then that can't also be our group. Right. And that's right. And also, it's only slightly electron withdrawing. So it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be able to take the role of a nitro group anyway. However, we can get another reaction here if we add heat. So if there's no heat, there would just be no reaction. With no heat, there would be no reaction. But with the heat, we're going to get a different reaction. We're going to get an elimination addition reaction. Elimination addition. But what does elimination mean? Getting rid of. Getting rid of what? Um, no, it's. Addition is adding a pi bond, and then elimination is getting rid of. I think we got those reversed. Other way, other way, yeah, that's why it's confusing. We got those reversed. So yeah. The elimination is when you actually form a pi bond, and addition is when you remove a pi bond. The, the, the terms seem to be the, the opposite of what they really mean. But this is because you can form a pi bond by eliminating two groups, and you can remove a pi bond by adding two groups. So anyway, let, let's think about what would happen first here. Do you guys know what the first step of this reaction would be? Um, OH would attack the chlorine spot. Let's go through that together. So we're going to do an elimination. It turns out that a good first step here, now we're going to use the OH as a base, not as a nucleophile. Since this is going to be an elimination, we have to use the OH as a base, not as a nucleophile. Well, a base is somebody who takes a proton. So we're going to take this proton here, but we can't leave these electrons stranded. They're going to go here. So that's the benzene. And this is irreversible too? That's right, this is not reversible. Actually, though, I made a mistake. Initially, the electrons have to go here. Yeah, that's right. So let's draw the intermediate from this step. Now the benzene is formed because it's going to push off the chlorine. Good. So this is an, uh, a two-step elimination. A two-step elimination. Now, one of the most important things that should go through your mind when you're doing an unfamiliar mechanism, well, there's two things that should go through your mind when you're doing an unfamiliar mechanism. You should make sure you get all the bonds right, and you need to make sure you get the charges right, because since it's unfamiliar, you won't be able to do them just from memory. You always change two charges at the initial tail and the final head. Well, this is the carbon here at the initial tail. Uh-oh. Uh, all right. So it looks like you got it right, now you got it wrong. So much for that big speech I was going to give. All right, well, anyway. Um, this is at the initial tail. It started negative, and it's losing electrons, so it should end up positive. All right, so I was going to berate you for not putting a positive charge here, but you were right not to put a positive charge here, because it started out negative in this case. And the, this is at the final head, so it ended out with a negative charge. So good job. You uh, paid close attention to the charges. Obviously, the net charge here is negative 1, and the net charge here is also negative 1. So there is no charge here. Okay, that's uh, not great. That's not great.
And here's where we have the benzyne. Now, this benzyne is very unhappy and very reactive. What is the reason that this is so unhappy and so reactive? Because of the tertiary of the bonds. They're, they're like constrained, so it has to be not linear, but it's, yeah. Good. What geometry does a triple bond want to take linear? That's right. <clears throat> a triple bond wants to take a linear geometry, but that's pretty much impossible in a six-membered ring. Um, so this is going to be a very unhappy situation, very reactive, not going to stick around for long. So we don't need that positive charge to make this reactive. Even without a charge, this is going to be very reactive because it wants to get a better shape. So this is, the benzyne reactions are elimination addition reactions? That's right. Notice that what, what have we done so far? We've done the elimination. You can see why this is called an elimination. We're forming a new pi bond. We're forming the third, the, 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 the triple bond here by eliminating the hydrogen and the chlorine. We're not eliminating the pi bond. We're eliminating the hydrogen and the chlorine groups. And that's what forms this pi bond here. So that was the elimination step. You can see it's a two-step elimination. First, you lose the hydrogen. Then you lose the chlorine. You might have thought it was one step, but I looked it up. And it's two steps. Now we need to have somebody attack. Now we could have uh, water or hydroxide uh, attack. Right, let's see how this shows the book. Yeah, so this would be done in water. So now we can have water attack. Will you produce the water from the OH anyway? That's true. To match this up more with what the book does, the book does it more like this. So, oh, we should talk to them. Another hydroxide attack. Yeah. That puts a negative charge here. And then we can maybe use the water we produced in the first step. To get rid of the negative charge here. Now did you notice that there's regiochemistry here? There's two different places that the hydroxide can attack. This is an important issue that's usually tested here. These two positions are not equivalent to each other. So we could just as well have the hydroxide attack here. So here's the two products that we get. I don't think we need to worry about whether one of these is major or minor. So you just know that we get both of these products. Now, this is a good argument for doing the mechanism here. Because if you didn't do the mechanism, it would be easy to think that the hydroxide will just replace the chlorine. In fact, they could just replace the chlorine. But if you remember that there's a triple bond intermediate, you can see that there's two different carbons you can attack. In fact, this is kind of backwards. This is, uh, there's a little story in the textbook about this is how they figured out the mechanism in the first place. When people were first looking at this reaction, they thought it was just a normal substitution, where the hydroxide just replaced the chlorine. 
But then they noticed that they were getting this weird product over here, and they had to come up with an explanation for where this came from, and eventually someone came up with the benzyme explanation for how this carbon over here could also be reactive, because a triple bond has to involve two separate carbons. Um, so because uh, that's a story that organic chemists like, this is a, a way this tends to be tested. <laughs>